up in the gods. Uh, Minister, we had a short debate last night, and it's ironic that uh, we're back here again so soon, you and I, but uh, part of what was mentioned last night was possibly the dignity of work and the importance of work and the value of work. Work delivers respect. It engenders self-respect. It provides independence to families, financial independence. It allows people and families to craft a future for themselves and for their children, and hopefully to provide security in their old age. And we have many forms of work in this country, as we know, and retail at this present time has proven to be one of the more difficult areas. In work, there's always implicit contracts of give and take, the contract of exchange, fair work for fair value. And you can argue that the pay that is given to people is full recompense for what they have done in a day. But I think you must also add the summation of time, the intrinsic value that employees deliver to an organisation over time. And Debenhams is one such organisation in Ireland. And we know that we have people there working extended years, some over 30 years, a lifetime of work, in fact. Debenhams in Warford has been a significant employer for many years, not without its troubles, but will be seen as a linchpin retailer. It is the linchpin tenant up to now in the City Square shopping centre, providing employment directly and for concessionaires as well, and was well supported in Waterford City. It had previous administration difficulties some years ago when the workers rallied absolutely and so did the city. I hold here my own Debenhams loyalty card that I got four years ago to show solidarity and support to the workers in Waterford. The South East region presently has the highest regional unemployment in the country. Waterford as a city has the highest city unemployment in the country. And Debenhams was a very valuable workplace for a lot of people and brought a lot of pride to the city. And I am astounded, to be quite frank, with, to quote someone else here already, the tactical insolvency that has taken place with this company. I got an email the other day telling me my number of loyalty points and that I can cash them in online. I won't be doing that. I will not be supporting this company in what it has taken and what it has engendered to do to the people that it has employed. I think, Minister, we need to look again at the enshrinement of employment respect within company law, because it is certainly not there presently when a company can do this process and companies have availed of this process, as we have heard in the past. Last night, I spoke to you about administration light the protection that should be afforded to small SMEs to keep them uh, clear from speculative administrators who would look to do asset stripping and force their companies into administration. Well, the reverse of that is also true, Minister. You can also have speculative asset stripping, which is what has taken place here, and the movement of funding to two companies in two different jurisdictions. And as we have heard, the smaller part of the entity, which was saddled with the debt and now ultimately has become a liability, has become insolvent because of that debt. That is not fair, Minister. And I hope, as we spoke about last night, to see fairness in this programme for government. And you and I spoke about this yesterday yesterday evening. Working class has been said here a number of times. I don't like that phrase. I think it's a pejorative term, and I think it's used too liberally in this House. There are many deputies in this House and in the Shannon who do not know what working class means. All we know is Irish people working in Ireland. I think it suggests inequity, and I think it suggests a vision where there should be none. And I believe, Minister, now is the time that we must signal change in this area. Last night, I mentioned dynamic leadership, innovation and radical reform. I think now is the time, Minister, the Government should show this resolve and signal, whether you're a frontline, whether you're a midline, whether you're a backline worker, that Government has your back. I believe a resolution to the De Debenham solution can be found, Minister. Where there's a will, there's a way. I hope, Minister, Government can uh, resolve these and close these loopholes that exist within company law.
and treat these vulnerable workers equitably and fairly. And I think maybe it's time that we looked at something like mandated employee trusts in such organisations to ensure that employees in the future are not left, quite literally, holding the baby and nothing else. Thank you, Chair.